thrilled to have with us today Mark Ellis, Senior Health Program Analyst for TRICARE at Defense Health Agency, Shane Fahm, Health Program Analyst for TRICARE at the Def Defense Health Agency. Without further delay, I will turn things over to Mark Ellis. Hi, good afternoon. This is Mark Ellis at the Defense Health Agency. Thanks for joining us. Um, this is our opportunity and your opportunity to hear about TRICARE uh, and as it has changed since 1 January and the options that you and your family members have in selecting the right type of care uh, that you need for you and your family members. Uh, so myself and, and my colleague Shane Fromm and also Francine Forstel from our customer service shop are here to go over some things and then answer your questions. We're going to try to go fairly quickly through the presentation in order that we can maximize our time together to hear specific questions from you. If we don't get through all the questions, we will respond to um, uh, uh, the questions that you submit to the military one source folks. However, please, and to help us maximize our time together, if we've already covered a point or if someone's already asked a question that's similar to yours, uh, please let others, other folks ask questions so we can maximize our time together. However, before we start, I'm obligated. I can't tell you who obligates me, but on slide number two, there's a disclaimer that I must read to you. Uh, the appearance of hyperlinks does not constitute endorsement by the Department of Defense of this website or the information products or service contained therein. For other than authorized activities such as military exchange and morale, welfare, and rec sites, the DOD does not exercise editorial control over the information you may find in these locations. Such links are provided consistent with the stated purpose of this DOD-sponsored webinar. That being said, uh, we will continually uh, reference you to tricare.mil uh, as the number one source for any information regarding the TRICARE programs in terms of what they cover, what are the differences, co-payments, cost shares, et cetera. If you have any questions about your TRICARE coverage, your number one source online is TRICARE.mil. With that being said, let me go to the agenda. Here's what we're going to talk about today. So we're going to talk about the TRICARE changes that they are now effective that started on 1 January 2018. We're going to talk about access to care, some changes to the TRICARE regions and how they affect you, uh, the start of TRICARE Select and what that meant to folks who previously had TRICARE standard coverage. We're going to talk about the enrollment changes and how those uh, affect you and your family members. We're going to talk a little bit about health plan cost and pharmacy cost. And finally, if we don't say it once, twice, or even three times, We'd like to remind you to take command of your health care today. The fact of the matter of it is uh, TRICARE is no longer waiting, uh, is making uh, selections of coverage for you based on your beneficiary status. You must elect to, to what kind of TRICARE coverage you'd like to have for each of your family members. And so with that in mind, let me turn it over to my colleague, uh, Shane Fong, who's going to talk about access to care and some other things. Hi, good afternoon. So my name is Shane Fong, and um, I'm here to first talk to you about um, how we've increased. Um, next slide, please. I'm sorry. Slide four. Okay. So um, the DHJ is working hard hard to improve access to care. The first step to getting care is accessing your care. So um, this slide right here just um, bullet points some of the initiatives that we're working on, but I'm going to go into some more detail. On the next slide, slide five, please. So the nurse advice line is um, the first thing I want to talk to you about today. And the reason why this would be your first go-to is because Sometimes you might not even need care, but you can get an questions answered by calling the nurse advice line. There's um, registered nurses available 24-7, and um, they, they can kind of guide you to let you know, in fact, if you, there's something self-care you can do or if you actually need to go and access care, urgent or other. Um, the telephone number for the nurse advice line is one 800 
TRICARE, which is 874-2273. The next um, bit I want to talk to you about is urgent care. Urgent care has um, <clears throat> had a big change and as of 1 January. Most TRICARE Prime beneficiaries don't need a referral. And TRICARE Prime, um, it, historically, you need a referral if you're, you're um, not being seen by your PCM. So this allowing um, our beneficiary, prime beneficiaries, to go and self-refer for urgent care is a big step. And we kind of baby stepped to it with a pilot program that allowed two visits per year. And now it's um, unlimited as of right now. It can be revisited each year and per seeing how um, the utilization goes and how it in helps the beneficiaries, the policy will be adjusted if, it, if need be. But right now it's unlimited for most prime beneficiaries. Um, the active duty service members in prime and TRICARE overseas prime program, they still need their referral and they see, still need to adhere to service regulations. But um, the overseas prime remote folks, um, they, they don't actually, or active duty service overseas prime remote or prime remote themselves, if you're an active duty service member in your prime remote, you can go without the referral, but you still need to, um, if you're overseas, call the contractor because they you can't get cashless claimless if you don't call the overseas contractor. So it's kind of saying, well, you don't really need a referral, but in essence, we're still wanting you to call the contractor so that you can get the convenience of not getting that, having to pay cash claimless overseas. That's a big issue. I just wanted to um, foot stop that. But like the beneficiaries who overseas enrollees that come back here, they can go um, for uh, unlimited urgent care and they don't need to call anybody obviously because we don't have to worry about um, paying up front so much here. Um, the next thing, slide six please. Oh, and I did want to end the urgent care um, bit of information with there's no point of service deductibles if the urgent care is received at a network provider. Or we've even um, it made it a little bit more accessible by um, saying, well, if it's an urgent care center, it can be network or non-network, just has to be a TRICARE authorized provider. So that's increasing the access to urgent care a little bit more even further. And then there's all kinds of online mobile apps, e-health stuff. I don't have any particular that I'm going to mention right now, but um, if you go to our website, um, you can get information on those kinds of things. The expanded hours um, for the military uh, hospitals, that's kind of a huge thing because um, there was a new statute that um, required us to look at the access at the military treatment facilities and in particular um, required a set amount of facilities to offer urgent care up to like 11 o'clock at night. Those, those there, they have been identified which facilities, I don't have that list memorized, but you can inquire with your particular MTF and you might be one of the lucky facilities that actually has urgent care open until 11 now. So with that, I will go to the next slide. The next slide is number seven. And we're talking about here, I'm going to talk to you just about the um, how we've transitioned from three regions to two regions, trying to simplify. Um, we are, we're hoping that this will help the families when they're moving because they won't have to um, learn uh, a new contract as much. I mean, well, obviously, have we had three regions. We had the north, the south, and the west. Now we have the west and the east. And basically, what we did was we took the um, north and the south, and we just merged those to make the east. And then the west is still the west. So, but but the but the big thing is now we only have two contractors. Humana Military um, is administering the benefit for the eastern region, and HealthNet Federal mm -hmm. Services is administering the benefit for the West. So their information is all available at tricare.mail slash regions. And the best way to go directly to their contact information is tricare.mail 
slash contact us, and then it'll have the phone numbers there. Um, I don't have anything else today, so with that, I'll turn it back over to Mr. Ellis for the main event. So hi, this is Mark Ellis again. So I'm on slide number eight. Um, so let's talk about TRICARE Select. Uh, so TRICARE Select re uh, replaced TRICARE Standard Extra on the 1st of January. For those that were eligible for TRICARE Standard Extra on the 31st of December 2017 and remained eligible for TRICARE, we automatically converted your TRICARE Health Plan from TRICARE Standard Extra to Select. Um, um, Select is a preferred provider organization arrangement or PPO style plan. Um, so from this point on, if you needed or desired to have TRICARE Select, you must elect to enroll in coverage. There's no longer an automatically an entitlement to any TRICARE purchase care coverage. So when TRICARE Standard Extra went away, that was an entitlement that was automatically uh, put into our eligibility database and said you have a, a purchase care plan called TRICARE Standard Extra. That capability no longer exists. You must elect to enroll when you become eligible, whether you want to enroll in Prime or Select or whatever plan that you are eligible to enroll in. Under TRICARE Select, you manage your own health care. Referrals are generally not required. There are some things that require pre-authorization. One of the things that's uh, important about TRICARE Select is the department was required by law to make TRICARE Select more readily available so you would see network providers because under network providers, you would pay a standard copayment as opposed to a percentage of the cost. We'll talk a little bit more about that in a little bit. But the bottom line answer is 85% of TRICARE Select enrollees in each region in the continental United States should have access to network providers, which should reduce your out-of-pocket expenses. If you have questions about TRICARE Select, tricare.mil backslash select for more information. TRICARE Prime, generally on the 1st of January, if you were enrolled in Prime on 31 December, your TRICARE plan coverage was automatically renewed for another year. Um, there were no changes on 1 January to TRICARE Select. Medicare is still the primary payer when Medicare covers that service, and then TRICARE is the secondary payer. You said TRICARE for Life. Oh, I'm, I'm TRICARE for Life. I'm sorry, TRICARE for Life. I'm getting close to the age for TRICARE <laughs> for Life, so <laughs> looking it. forward to it. So, But again, TRICARE for Life, those beneficiaries with Medicare wraparound coverage, Often we think about these folks as only being over age 65. There are actually military beneficiaries under the age of 65 due to disability who actually have Medicare as their primary payer, and then TRICARE acts as the Medicare supplement, so to speak. All right, next slide. So let's talk about the enrollment changes. So the enrollment period is now a calendar year versus a fiscal year. So the calendar year begins on the 1st of January and goes to the end of December. So your catastrophic caps, your deductibles, and your enrollment fees are all calculated now on a calendar year. Uh, we actually extended fiscal year 17 an extra three months from October to the end of December to make that happen. So if you had claims during those three months and you'd already fulfilled your deductible or you fulfilled your CAC cap, the government actually helped pay more of those claims. So beginning though on 1 January, that's the period of time for your coverage. And again, you must elect to enroll in Primer Select within 90 days of being eligible, or you're only eligible for space day care at military hospitals and clinics. So the law is very clear, you must take command of your health care when you first join the military, or if you have a change in status, for example, active duty going to retired status, you got 90 days to elect what coverage you'd like to have or else you'll not have any coverage for the rest of the year. Um, the one exception we were allowed to make under law is for newly eligible active duty family members, we do automatically enroll them once they become eligible for TRICARE. It's a unique part of what the law previously allowed and even though we had other changes in 2017, uh, we, felt it, we felt very strongly that for the active duty family members, 
particularly those that are new to the military, that we would automatically enroll them in TRICARE coverage. Even though we're automatically enrolling them, we'll notify them in writing, and if they would like to be in a different plan other than what we elected for them, uh, they have 90 days to do so. Uh, and then finally, starting in 2019, on the 1st of January 2019, you can only switch your health plans during an annual enrollment period, the second week of November to the second week of December, or if you have a qualifying life event. For those of you that have commercial coverage or had commercial coverage in the past, or maybe had the Federal Employees Benefit Health Program, this is exactly what everybody else in the United States deals with in enrolling with their health plan coverage. You can only elect your coverage when you first become eligible for it during an annual, enro uh, annual enrollment period, or if you have a qualifying life event, such as a birth, a death, a marriage, moving from one area to another, uh, gaining command sponsorship overseas, losing command sponsorship overseas. So on our website, tricare.mil, uh, you can look at the list of the qualifying events. So all these enrollment changes are required by law, but Congress, as well as the DOD, were concerned that these type of changes are kind of radical for us in the military healthcare system. And so Congress required that 2018 be an enrollment grace period. What I mean by that is from 1 January 2018 to the end of December, 31 December 2018, you can elect to make any changes to your TRICARE health plan that you need to get aligned to what you want to have for you and your family members. Remember, not everybody in the family has to have the same coverage. You may have circumstances where some don't live in an area where Prime is offered, or maybe Prime is not the best plan for a beneficiary who has lots of specialty care needs where you may want to manage that care yourself as opposed to having a primary care manager under TRICARE Prime manage that care and direct where that care is given. So remember, it's up to you. Take command of your health care. 2018 is an enrollment grace period, so take a look at your coverage. Go to the TRICARE.mil website, take a look at what the differences are, and then decide, because come 1-31 December, whatever that you have in our DEERS enrollment system, the Defense Eligibility Enrollment System, we are going to roll over on 1 January 2019, and that will be the TRICARE plan coverage you will have for the rest of the year unless you have a qualifying life event, and you will not be able to elect to change your coverage until the open enrollment season in November, December of 2019 for coverages that will then take effect on 1 January. This is probably the biggest radical change to the TRICARE benefit other than the cost shares. All right, so let's move on because I do want to talk about cost. So on slide number 10, um, the law actually created grandfathering. And so beneficiaries fall into one of two groups based on whether you or your sponsor first entered the military, whether you were first enlisted or were appointed in a uniformed service. So each group has different enrollment fees and out-of-pocket expenses. Group A beneficiaries is if the sponsor's initial enlistment or appointment in a uniformed service occurred before 1 January 2018, you're in Group A. Group B are if the sponsor is initial enlistment or appointment in a uniform service occurred on or after January 1, 2018, those sponsors, those beneficiaries are in Group B. There is an exception for those beneficiaries that are enrolled in our premium-based plans, TRICARE Reserve Select for the selected reserve members and their family members, TRICARE Retired Reserve for the retired reserve and their family members, TRICARE Young Adult for those that have aged out of young dependent children that have aged out of TRICARE but up to the age of 26, and the Continued Health Benefit healthcare benefit program, which is our COBRA-like coverage, all these plans are Group A, regardless of when the sponsor first joined the military. Also included in those mandatory Group B uh, for TRICARE Select, for our NATO active duty service members and their eligible family members, they're also in Group B TRICARE Select they're for outpatient care only. So the plan costs are dependent upon when the sponsor initially joined the military 
or for our premium plans, they're all in group B. So on slide 11, So in general, for the active duty family members, the TRICARE Prime uh, beneficiaries continue to have no cost shares. TRICARE Select for both active duty family members and retirees as well have a fixed dollar copayment versus the percentage cost of the cost share for most network care. So basically, we looked at that what the average out-of-pocket expenses were, and instead of you paying a percentage of an unknown amount that the doctor is going to charge you, we converted that into a standard copayment. Uh, remember, for TRICARE Select, you must pay your deductible first, and then the copays apply. But we believe this is going to be a good benefit to both beneficiaries and to providers, because both of you all will know up front, if you see a network provider, whether it's under Prime or under Select, you'll know exactly what your out-of-pocket expenses are for most outpatient procedures. For retirees, the Group A, costs were increased to match the Group B uh, for TRICARE Prime. Um, the reason is, is for, for TRICARE Prime, if you look at the Group B rates, the Group B rates don't have one average copayment for all outpatient visits. They have a different copayment outpatient factor, whether you see a primary care physician or provider, a specialty care physician or provider, uh, urgent care, or emergency department. So the group B and the group A TRICARE prime rates are the same types of categories of outpatient cost and they're and they're standardized at the same cost. And again for TRICARE select for retirees there's a fixed copayment for most network care. If you have any questions about the TRICARE out-of-pocket expense costs, we urge you to go to tricare.mil backslash cost there's a series of web pages in, in a four-page, multicolor, very pretty looking TRICARE cost fact sheet you can download that will give you all the information that you, you need to know about what your out-of-pocket expenses are, whether you're Group A or Group B, inpatient, outpatient, uh, and there's also web pages to help explain all that. Next slide, we'd like to talk about the pharmacy copayments. So the NDAA, the National Defense Authorization Act for fiscal year 2018, required an increase in pharmacy copayments for TRICARE beneficiaries. These uh, pharmacy copayment increases took effect on the 1st of February. The change doesn't affect active duty service members who have no copayments, and it also didn't affect survivors of active duty service members who died on, on, uh, while on active duty and also didn't affect those uh, retired service members who are medically retired and their family members. So for the active duty service members, there's no copayments, and for the survivors and for the medically retired service members and their dependents, their copayments are fixed at the 2018, 2017 rate. These increases uh, were across retail and home delivery point of service, uh, and again, uh, if the drug is offered at a military treatment facility pharmacy, there is a zero cost share if you get your uh, medications at a military pharmacy. The next slide uh, shows the breakout of the new copayments. Um, I'm not going to go through those, but in generally, most of them went up about $4 per, per uh, uh, what they were from the 2017 rate. All right. So, um, so what's our guidance to family members? This is this is sort of a, a big change in terms of the change to the TRICARE health plans in terms of what do you want me to do in terms of enrollment. So first and foremost, nothing changed for TRICARE for life, remember? Uh, number two, if you're enrolled in the plan and that's what you like and that's what you want to continue, uh, starting on 1 January for 2019, do absolutely nothing. The, if you're comfortable with the plan that you're in for this year, uh, and that's what you want to have for 2019, when it comes to 31 December 2018, we will automatically roll your existing coverage over, and that's the health plan you will have for the calendar year 2019, unless you have a qualifying life event. If you want to change your coverage, remember you can do it anytime 
in 2018. But remember, after 1 January 2019, you can only change uh, uh, during the year if you experience a qualifying life event or in the November or December timeframe in 2019, you can elect to make a change, but this, that coverage will not take place until 1 January 2020. So please educate yourself on the, on the cost changes. W, uh, I'm sorry, tricare.mil backslash cost. Uh, and remember to make sure that you and your family members eligibility is updated in the DEERS database. Um, slide 15, please, 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 please take command of your healthcare today. Um, I know these are significant changes to how TRICARE has operated in the past, but we need you to make sure that you and your family members have the TRICARE coverage that you desire and that you elect those coverages because in 2019, uh, that's what you'll have for the rest of the year. So please make sure your DEERS is up to date on slide 15. There's websites and phone numbers and fax numbers. Sign up for e-correspondence in MillConnect. Uh, there's the website there. And also you can sign up for uh, email subscriptions at the TRICARE website. If you would like to keep updated on the changes that, that happen uh, to the TRICARE health plans and coverages and cost shares, tricare.mil backslash changes. Uh, and again, finally, if I haven't said it once, I've said it a couple of times, please, this is your opportunity. This is your entitlement to military health care benefits, but we need your active participation and elected election of coverage to make sure that the coverage to which you are eligible for, you have elected, and that's what you'd like to have. So with that, I'm going to turn the, uh, the microphone back over to Stan at Military OneSource, and we'll take as many questions as we can. Thanks, Mark. Um, I noticed a lot of questions coming in about um, life events. So can you just define, um, again, what a, a life event is? So a qualifying life event is similar to commercial coverage. Basically, you're enrolled in the health plan for the whole calendar year, but then something happens, either family uh, qualifying life events are often associated with changes in, in a family composition, marriage, divorce, birth, death. They can also relate to a change in status. In the military, it relates to, in particular, a change in status of the military member. The member goes from active duty to retired. The selected reserve member gets called to active duty and then gets demobilized and goes from active duty back to the selected reserve. And at some point in time, the selected reserve member retires and becomes a gray area retired reserve member. So all those change in statuses are also an opportunity of, of a qualifying life event. Because remember, as you change, as the sponsor changes status, the eligibility for a health plan may change. And moving is also a really big example here in, in the military in terms of where you go, particularly if you go overseas, there, there are definitely different health plan opportunities for you. And so every time you have a change in status, every time you move, and every time the, the, military, the family composition changes, please take a look at your health care coverages, not only for uh, the medical coverage, but also for your dental coverage as well. Mm -hmm. And so if you go to tricare.mil backslash QLE, there's a list of the list of the, oh, it's called life events. Tricare.mil backslash life events will give you a list of the commonly qualifying life events that will apply to Tricare Health Plan. Next question. Okay. Um, under TRICARE Select, do I need a specialty referral to see an ENT specialist? I am an Army retiree. So in general, TRICARE Select does not require a referral for you to go see a specialist. There are certain things that are required to be pre-authorized. For example, if you are electing your provider is electing to admit you to an inpatient facility, uh, that requires pre-authorization to make sure it's a covered benefit and that your care is being appropriately managed. But in general, for outpatient referrals, uh, moving and seeing a specialist, 
uh, no referral is required for TRICARE Select. Please call your contractor if you have any questions. Next question. My wife is under um, TRICARE for Life due to our age difference. I'm younger. I'm TRICARE Select. When enrollment fees begin in 2021, will I have to pay the family rate of $300 or just pay for myself at $150? I will not be 65 and eligible for TRICARE for Life uh, for a few more years. Okay. So uh, TRICARE for Life for Group A beneficiaries, we are scheduled to implement a $150 individual or $300 family enrollment fee for TRICARE Select Group A beneficiaries. And so if it's just you and your spouse, your wife will be under TRICARE uh, for Life, and you would enroll at the single rate of $150. Bucks. Now, if you have other eligible family members, then it would be the family rate. Next. Okay, next question reads, I'm currently a TRICARE Prime member who is on a CPAP and will turn um, Medicare eligible in October. I'm due for a new CPAP machine after five years in April. Should I wait until after I get on Medicare to upgrade my CPAP so that they will become first payer or can I do it under TRICARE in April? So I, it, 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 the answer to your question is, is if it, it's up to you. I mean, you're eligible to have a cost shared by Tricare at the five-year point, I believe. If you elect to, to delay that until you turn age 65, then it would be cost shared uh, initially by Medicare, and then Tricare would be your second payer. Okay, next question. Does TRICARE Select require a prescription for speech feeding, occupational, and physical therapy? If so, what fax number to send to? So, in general, referrals are not required for um, 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 outpatient referrals to the specialties you mentioned. And you should con go either go to TRICARE.mil and, and contact us, backslash contact us, to find out the phone number of the appropriate regional contractor. Okay, part two to that question, does it also um, require a um, authorization for, I guess, speech therapy? I have requested and it is stating no authorization required, but does it will require a speech so again, authorization? Referral. So that's all under referrals. Correct. So. In general, TRICARE Select does not require referral to outpatient specialty care. So if you have any questions about that, please contact your regional contractor. Next question, where can I get info about all the different levels of cost shares? W, uh, sorry, tricare.mil backslash cost. Okay. Regarding copays for pharmacy, I use Express Scripts and do not currently pay any copays. Is that going to change? So, um, depends on your category. This is trying to say, the assumption would be, I believe, if you're not paying anything, that typically means you're getting generic medications through mail order, and at this particular point in time. That hasn't changed, but remember, pharmacy costs are subject to change on an annual basis. So it might be today that's the case, but that's not not always going to be. If you go to the MTS, definitely there is no copay cost share. So this Mark, so if you go back to slide number 13, effective one February, generic for 90-day supply uh, is seven dollars for a 90-day supply, except for those that are accepted. And as Francine said, prior to 1 February, generics had no copayment for any beneficiary. So for those that still, after 1 February, have a zero copay, is active duty service members and family members that deceased active duty service members and retire, medically retired retirees and their family members still have a zero copayment. Otherwise, everybody else, we pay seven bucks. Mm -hmm. Next question. In the past, TRICARE has covered mammograms. Last year, I received a bill. 
not for the mammogram itself, but a charge for the radiologist to read the mammogram. My EOB indicated that TRICARE does not cover this. Is this a new policy? No, uh, you should contact your regional contractor. That does not seem to be correct. We cover both the professional component and the technical component of mammographies. So please contact your regional contractor for assistance. Okay, next question. Prior to the changes, I had local doctors, hospitals, physical therapy, et cetera, that although were not network, um, they were near me. Now I have to travel 70 miles to find a to find even a network provider. Why is this? So uh, when we make uh, changes to the regional contracts, um, the new contractors must reestablish networks. And just like in the commercial sector, when plans change, providers, remember, this is America. Providers can choose to elect to participate in a health insurance plans, uh, a network uh, on a case-by-case -case basis. And so healthcare providers may choose to uh, be network providers with the new contractor, and they may elect to not. Um, if you believe that there's uh, concerns about access to care for network providers in your area, please reach out and contact the regional contractor for assistance. Yeah. Next question. Next question. There seems to be some confusion where auto enrollment is concerned. If ADSM has a newborn and the infant is auto enrolled in prime, does a parent still need to contact the enrollment in order for the infant to be assigned a PCM? Good question. So we do auto enroll active duty family members that are newly eligible. Newborn is a very good example. So our business rules are if the zip code of the newborn is in a prime service area in the continental United States, typically prime service areas are around active military installations and certain former military installations that have been closed by base realignment and closure legislation, we will automatically enroll them in TRICARE Prime and in general they will be automatically assigned an MTF PCM. If there's no capacity at the MTF, then the family member would be um, family member would be enrolled with a civilian uh, PCM, but is not. Let me go way back. Next question. Next question. How did the um, tri how, how did Tricare let families know about these changes? We have families who are completely unaware of the increase to their cost shares. So there's a couple uh, answers that, number one, anybody who is in TRICARE Standard or Extra, anybody who is enrolled in TRICARE Prime by DOD household, by DOD household got a letter stating both the regional changes as well as the changes to the TRICARE health plan. In addition, in region east, in the east region, Humana sent a similar letter to every DOD household in the East region notifying beneficiaries of the changes both to the regional contracts as well as the TRICARE changes that were to take place on 1 January. Additionally, we've had significant efforts to communicate through uh, our, our website and also through key stakeholders, uh, the military support organizations and the veteran support organizations to educate their constituents on the changes to TRICARE. There are 9.4 million beneficiaries out there, uh, about maybe four and a half to five and a half million needed to know of the changes. So our apologies if, if a letter didn't make it to your household, uh, but um, please uh, go to our website and, and make sure that you get up to speed on what your options are. And sign up for email alerts. So tricare.mil. Thank you. Next question. Next question. No one, nobody ever talks about the uh, United States. I mean, the Uniform Services Health Family Plan. Does these changes apply? 
So for the most part, yes. So the, the, the key part is, is the Uniform Services Family Health Plans, which are designated TRICARE Prime networks in six specific locations in the United States. They offer a TRICARE Prime benefit to eligible Uniform Services beneficiaries that are under the age of 65. The significant change to the USFHP plans is they now adopt the TRICARE Prime cost shares uh, and new rates effective 1 January and, 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 I, and the enrollment rules. And I would just note that in if, if you're asking in regards to the whole presentation, U.S. Family Health Plan is not participating in the um, unlimited self-referral for urgent care because of their unique network situation. So I, I just wanted to let you know that they they are not participating in the urgent care uh, unlimited benefit. So in these designated six service areas in the United States, beneficiaries, if eligible, are welcome to enroll in USFHB. Next question. In the past, um, I received 90-day supply of prescriptions at retail pharmacies. Can I still get a 90-day supply for my medications? And what is the cost? Is it the 30-day price times three? So a couple of different ways to answer this question. Number one, last year we started a, a, a process by which if you have maintenance medications, a designated list of drugs that you take on a regular basis that are non-controlled substances, you must elect to get those drugs filled, those prescriptions filled either at a military treatment facility pharmacy or you must have those drugs um, uh, filled by a home delivery. And so you get a couple of times to go to the retail network pharmacy if your drug's on that list. And after that, TRICARE is going to refuse to cost share on that drug. Otherwise, if it's not on the maintenance drug list, yes, you can go to a retail network pharmacy uh, depending on the type of drug. And yes, you would pay three times. So if you want a 90-day uh, supply you would three you would pay three thirty dollar copayment amounts. If you want to know what those costs are, please go to tricare.mil backslash cost. Next question regarding dental and vision. I'm aware that uh, Delta Dental is going away. Will the cost for a Fed VIP be the same? So uh, so um, the department is planning to. Uh, effective 1 January, uh, stop the TRICARE retiree dental program, and instead military beneficiaries who are otherwise eligible will be able to elect to enroll in uh, the OPM's uh, FedVIP dental program. And then eligible beneficiaries, mostly everybody but active duty service members, may elect to enroll and the vision plan. I think the exceptions are active duty service members and young adults that are over the age of 23. So both those will, there will be an annual open enrollment period in November and December of 2018. Don't stop your coverage in TDRP, the retiree dental program, but in general, the rates will be similar to that which the Fed employees and their dependents pay. More to come on that. If you'd like more information, go to tricare.mil and you can sign up to receive e-correspondence on updates to uh, our transition to FedVIP for retiree dental and vision care for most beneficiaries. Next question. If you have not elected to use your TRICARE and then turn 65, will your TRICARE still be secondary and will you have to enroll in it? So TRICARE for Life is still an entitlement program. You don't need to elect to enroll in TRICARE to do that. So here's how it works. You work through the uh, Social Security Administration uh, to sign up for Medicare Part B. We have a data sharing agreement with Social Security Administration uh, that once we are notified that you are enrolled in Part B and eligible and, and are entitled to group uh, uh, Medicare Part B, a, uh, we will automatically in the DEER system turn you on for TRICARE for Life coverage. It is an entitlement. And so we turn that on automatically. What's your part in this? 
you have to go to Social Security Administration and, and sign up to pay your Part B premiums. By law, you will not get TRICARE as a secondary payer unless you pay your Part B premiums. Exceptions, active duty service members who are, Medicare, are entitled to Medicare Part A don't have to pay premiums. Their family, active duty family members who are entitled to Part A do not have to pay uh, premiums. There are certain other beneficiaries who aren't entitled to, to Part A that can elect to enroll in other TRICARE coverage. For more information about that, go to tricare.mil TF, backslash TFL. Next question. My doctor requires that I take a non-generic form of a medication. When I try to fill the prescription at a regular pharmacy, I'm told that TRICARE will not pay for it. What do I do? I'm currently having to pay cash for the prescription. I am an active duty dependent. So there are certain medications that, that we do not fill at retail pharmacy because of the specialty nature of it. Uh, and so you need to contact Express Script International. Their toll-free number is 877-363-1303, and they'll be able to walk through what your options on and how you're to obtain this specialty medication. Most likely to be home delivery, but in certain situations where there's large military treatment facilities, that drug may be able to be filled at no cost at an MTF but ESI will be able to direct you and guide you in what your options are. Next question. I'm medically retired military, currently fed covered by FEHB. I used to be TRICARE standard, now I'm TRICARE select, but I, ha but I have to sign up. What's your recommendation for switching to TRICARE for life? I need to sign up for Medicare A and B to get TRICARE for life. Okay, so a couple of things. If you were in TRICARE Standard Extra on 31 December and were otherwise qualified for TRICARE coverage, you were automatically uh, converted to TRICARE Select. Eligibility for TRICARE for life is dependent upon Medicare Part A entitlement. To get TRICARE for life, you must pay your Part B premiums. So please go to tricare.mil backslash tricare for life, review that information. Uh, and the last thing is if you currently have FEHBP and you have uh, tricare select, FE FEHBP, we look at that as other health insurance and your FEHBP coverage based first and tricare is a secondary payer. If you not have not done so already, please contact both your regional contractor and the pharmacy contractor, their phone numbers are at tricare.mil backslash contact us and let the contractors know that you have commercial insurance. Next question. Okay, um, just to be clear, the enrollment fee um, do, does not begin until 1 January 2021. So, for Group A, which are those who joined the military on or be, uh, before January 1, 2018, the TRICARE Select Group A uh, enrollment fees are not scheduled for implementation until 1 January 2021. However, uh, you need to uh, be aware that Congress may make changes to the TRICARE benefit between now and then. So uh, what I just said is what we know to be current at this time. If you'd like to be informed as to what the TRICARE changes are, please go to tricare.mil uh, and sign up for uh, email subscription to be, get the latest and greatest. Next question. Okay, um, for beneficiaries with dual insurance, such as TRICARE and Medicaid, um, i.e. Medi-Cal, what is the best way to obtain non-benefit letter whenever items are um, prescript, prescribed and submitted to the OHI. I currently work for here. He provides a long URL, and we often receive requests for pharmaceuticals and DME items for providers and suppliers. However, as CCS is a medical program, we will typically cover the item requested when it is deemed non-covered or not covered. 
um, by OHI, including TRICARE. In the past, United Health was prompt in providing these letters prior to us receiving the request. So, good question. So, generally speaking, both providers and beneficiaries can contact the regional contractor, or in the case of if it's a pharmaceutical, contact the pharmacy contractor and request pre-authorization for anything, for any service. So if there's a concern about whether or not this is or is not covered under the TRICARE benefit, but from a medical and a pharmaceutical standpoint, you can contact the applicable contractor and ask for a pre-authorization that will, and the contractor shall provide in writing uh, whether or not that's a covered campus, uh, TRICARE covered benefit or not. And, and applicable if you ask what the cost shares may be. In general, with state Medicaid programs, TRICARE is the primary payer and Medicaid is the secondary payer. So if you, have, you are a family member or have dual coverage with the state Medicaid plan and TRICARE, please make sure when you talk to your, your providers that you do a couple things. One, make sure that they're both a Medicaid state provider, and also that they're at least a TRICARE authorized provider. Doesn't mean they need to be a TRICARE network provider, but they need to be a TRICARE authorized provider. And then second, make sure you tell the provider, don't send the claim to Medicaid first, send it to TRICARE first, and then TRICARE will notify the provider and the beneficiary with an explanation of benefits, and then that explanation of benefits can then be uh, sent to the Medicaid claims processor. In general, that should take care of your out-of-pocket expense. Thanks for your question. Next question. I'm a retired military member who was automatically switched to TRICARE Select from TRICARE Standard. Was my wife automatically switched to TRICARE Select from Standard as well, or do I have to enroll her? Nope. Everybody that was in TRICARE Standard Extra on the 31st of December, uh, uh, 2017 were converted over to TRICARE Select. So that wouldn't include your family member. How could you check to make sure that I'm telling you the truth? Good question, Mark. Um, so you can do a couple of things. Both of the regional contractors have secure web portals where you can log on either with a, a um, uh, DS logon, a DFAS logon, or you can create a logon with either of the regional contractors to look in the secure portal to see what the enrolled status of your fam you and your family members are. Additionally, you can go to MillConnect, log on again with those similar logons, and look at to see what the health plan uh, uh, status is of you and your family members. Thank you for your question. Next question. My husband will turn 65 and use Medicare eight months prior to me. His TRICARE Prime monthly payment is taken out of his retirement allotment. When he turns 65, will um, DFAS automatically reduce the TRICARE premium to only one person to cover me, or will I need to contact them? There's no need to once once the the, the enrollment status uh, for your for your sponsor changes to uh, Tricare for Life, um, then um, the contractor your regional contractor will notify DFAS that they only need they only need half the money now. Double check your. But do make sure you check your LDS to make sure that that's taken place. Okay, next question. I plan to live full-time in an RV for one to two years. How do I handle TRICARE prime appointments when I won't be in a, when I won't be in my enrolled region? We recommend that you disenroll from prime if you're not going to be in one area for more than 30 days. Standard or extra now, extra, I mean, uh, select now will offer you the opportunity to um, freedom of choice of provider. So this is Mark, but otherwise, if you don't elect to disenroll, the prime rules of your PCM must uh, provide or arrange all, for all your care gets real difficult when you're hundreds or thousands of miles away. Yeah. So please, please consider 
doing that, or you may run the risk of your your PCM back where you used to be will refuse to do that, and all your care is going to go point of service. Which is expensive. So, Next question. In reference to slide eight, TRICARE PROM remains the same for active duty families. What about retirees? You said, I'm sorry, slide eight, you said? Yes, yeah, slide eight. So go ahead and ask that question again, Stan. Okay. Um, let's see. Um, TRICARE PRIME remains the same for active duty families, but what about retirees? So in general, um, the, the, the construct of TRICARE PRIME of a PCM arranging or providing all your care still remains for retiree family members as well. What is a little bit different is, is uh, effective one January is Group A versus Group B. The enrollment fees are different. And, um, and and the catastrophic cap are different depending on the sponsor's status, whether they join the military before or after 1 January. So pretty much it's the same except for cost. Right. And you can go to tricare.mil slash cost. Next question. Next question. Will child dependents need to be be re-enrolled each year or will dependents roll over with the parents? As long as the dependent children remain eligible according to the sponsor status, they will automatically roll over with the sponsor. Same is true for the spouse. They must remain eligible according to the sponsor status. So for, in particular though, one of the things we're very much concerned about is those that are retiring after 1 January the, from active duty to retired uh, and from gray area reservists to becoming entitled to TRICARE coverage at age 60 for retired reserve members, they must elect their coverage. It's not something we can do for you. You must do that yourself. Next question. Next question. I don't understand the difference between you were automatically switched over to TRICARE Select and you have to elect TRICARE Select. We don't do it for you. Okay, so let me let me cover that. So yeah, that was kind of difficult. So what I wanted to what I what I meant to say is this. If you had TRICARE standard select coverage on 31 December 2017, we automatically converted your coverage. However, effective 1 January 2018, we are no longer converting anybody other than active duty family members so, into any TRICARE health plan. So after 1 January 2018, if you're not an active duty family member, we're not going to convert you into coverage, in particular for those that go from active duty to retired. So if you want TRICARE select coverage and you're not an active duty family member, you must elect to enroll and select or prime, either one, or any other TRICARE health plan that you would be eligible to purchase, yes. like or USF-8 fee, or if you're eligible to purchase one of the premium plans. We do not elect your coverage only for active duty family members who become newly eligible. After 1 January, the cold hard fact is it's up to you to tell us what health care coverage you want to be in and to pay the applicable fees as, 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 as they apply. So the convenience of the automatic conversion was for moving the program from standard to select. And moving forward, the only automatic thing happens in, with enrollment is for active duty family members. So technically, this is Mark again, so technically in 2017, we were supposed to have an open enrollment season in November or December of 2017 to have everybody elect to change their coverage for starting on 1 January. We didn't actually finish the automation of getting all of our systems, both government systems and contractor systems, they weren't ready to receive those changes until the 19th of December. So we chose not to have somewhere between four and a half and five and a half million people call us between the 20th of December and the 31st of December on what kind of coverage they wanted to have on the 1st of January. So 
sorry about that, but we felt like it would be really better because statutorily TRICARE Select, TRICARE Standard rather, had to end on 31 December by law that we chose to make sure that you had purchase care coverage come 1 January. Next question. Um, Mark, we are at the, we are past the top of the hour, um, so I'm going to end the Q&A at this time. And I would just like to thank um, you and Shane for sharing your invaluable um, experience and expertise. I would also like to thank our attendees for, for, for participating in today's webinar. And if you find yourself having questions after the webinar as we didn't get to all of the questions, please email moswebinars at militaryonesource.com and I'll send them over to our presenters for an answer. Uh, this concludes today's webinar on Take Command of Your Health, New Year, New TRICARE. Thank you all for joining us and have a great day.